Rishi Sunak wants to be partners with the Rwandan government. He wants us to have a parity, and I think he's going in the right direction. Uh, the leader of the Rwandan opposition, uh, Victoire Ingabiri Umahosa, has said that Rwandans, who are uh, the people who are deported to Rwanda under the legislation that Rishi Sunak envisages, uh, could well find themselves under some sort of knee-jerk crackdown if they protest against the conditions under which they're being held. She, um, she references the 13 people who were killed, the Congolese refugees killed by the police or by security forces in 2018. Now, uh, often it's, uh, it, it, it's identified as 12 people. It was 13. There was an extra person killed a few months later after July the 22nd. And uh, her name was Eloise. And was it Eloise or Elsie? I, I can't remember. Uh, and um, this is the, the, these deaths are something that was presented to Suella Bravman on the uh, Laura uh, Kunzberg show on a Sunday morning a few months back. And Suella Bravman's approach to this was to feign ignorance. But number one, she'd had letters about these deaths from senior charities. And number two, she should have been aware of this as well. I mean, this, this information is easily accessible on the internet. And it flies in the face of James Cleverley's nonsensical claims that uh, Rwanda is a safe country nonsensical uh, that Rwanda has a reputation of treating people uh, with respect. He says he can't see any credible reason to question Rwanda's track record of handling asylum cases. And he said Rwanda has a strong reputation of being humane. Utter rubbish. Utter rubbish when it's killing people. Why did it kill people? Well, we never really know. But um, what were these people doing when they were killed? They were protesting about the fact that food, which should have been coming from the United Nations, was not coming to them while they were being kept in a camp in Rwanda. The same thing can happen again. And Victoire In uh, Ingabiri Omahosa is absolutely right to flag this up. And she also points out uh, that... Um, uh, that this was the, 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 that a lot of the obsession with international human rights by both sides, by both Britain and Rwanda, is quote just for show. Uh, as far as as far as Rwanda, the Ru current Rwandan government is concerned, it's just taking the money, and it will take as much money as Britain can offer. President Paul Kagame's. Um, record of human rights um, abuse is clear. Uh, opposition activists disappearing, kidnapped, uh, put on show trials, uh, YouTubers, journalists. The treaty that... Um, James Cleverly signed doesn't address all this abuse and some of that abuse was highlighted by the Supreme Court not all of it which I find extraordinary and people people put in jail simply for criticizing the government well if that's the sort of parity that Rishi Sunak wants well maybe that's what he's got people deported simply for the way in which they get to the country. People deported and accused of being illegal without a trial. This smacks very much of the sort of uh, justice which people see in Rwanda, if they're on the wrong side of the Rwandan government. Journalists silenced. Human rights activists silenced. 
James Cleverley is simply sprouting rhetoric, which means nothing, which means nothing. And um, Vincent Beruta says, it's always been important to both Rwanda and the UK that our rule of law partnership meets the highest standards of international law and it places obligations on both the UK and Rwanda to act lawfully. Well, he hasn't acted lawfully so far. Without lawful behavior by the UK, Rwanda would not be able to continue with the migration and economic development partnership, but very nicely stuffing the money in his pocket. She, uh, uh, Ms. Ngabiri says, it's just for show. The statement about international law is surprising, but it is just for show. And she, um, she, she, she has, she has seen many of her colleagues, many of her friends, imprisoned. Uh, she herself, I think, was in prison. And the UK's treaty doesn't offer any form of security to the people who are going to be sent to Rwanda. Uh, and, and indeed, it's rather vague. So vague um, that, uh, I forget the name of the, of the politician now, who was questioned on, on, on television about the, about the Rwandan scheme. And, and he seemed to think, uh, conservative politicians seemed to think that it, that it was very good because if it went ahead, Rwanda would deal with the asylum applications. And when people were granted asylum, they'd be returned to the UK? No, not at all. They'd be staying there. But what I don't understand, even given the uh, short reassurances about reformment, what I don't understand is what will happen to those who's, who, who are not granted asylum. Will they then be sent back to the country that they came from? And will that um, asylum investigation be thorough? Rwanda remains a poor country. And... I, I think I think it's deserving of support, but getting support with these lies is is an extraordinary is an extraordinary issue, and it's not going to make Britain or Rwanda look good. It's going to reduce Britain to parity with Lu with Rwanda when it comes to the law, uh, because we are both. We are both going to be tarred with the same brush of uh, treating people with legal indifference, of putting rhetoric over reality, of putting convenience over the rule of law. And that's not a good reputation. And that's got nothing to do with the possibility of um, reformment with the possibility of refugees being shot simply because they don't like what's happening to them, uh, or indeed of failed refugees being um, being sent back to the country, to their country of origin, and then facing further persecution because their asylum application was not properly investigated.